How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night. It is the Earth Master out here about 11, 11 p.m. California time, October 21st, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a little bit of movement there in the Southern California. As you can see here on the USGS map, got a little swarm of activity stirring up here in the hazard zone. I call this the hazard zone because this is just opposite here of the, uh, well, off the plate boundary here where you would expect a lot of the strain to build up from the interaction of the two plates here. And uh, this swarm is uh, coming up on about 16 earthquakes near Thermal, California. Very shallow crustal quakes going on here. It's not a good sign there in terms of uh, uh, around the plate boundary. Let's see what we got for the largest magnitude here. Looks like it's going to be uh, a 1.6. Now, nothing above 2.5, but the, the sequence of events here uh, is picking up. And again, it's just off the San Andreas Fault here, the southern segment. Not 100% certain which fault system it is associated with out here, but it is in the zone where I don't like to see activity uh, because that's generally a good indicator here of some pressure transfer just off the plate boundary to this area. So kind of watching that region here. Again, it looks like this stirred up uh, oh, within the last hour, hour and a half. Uh, a couple earthquakes there this morning in that same location, but things really started to pick up here in the last couple hours. So we'll continue to watch that there in Southern California. Uh, a couple more earthquakes out there near the Ocotillo area, down south here around the border, and a little bit of movement up along the San Jacinto Fault Zone, uh, which stretches up there into the San Andreas Fault. Aside from that, uh, just general microquake activity in a broad scale event. Look at this. Uh, normally, you can follow a trail of earthquakes here on uh, any fault system, but this is a broad range of earthquakes all across the fault systems there. So we got a little bit of activity stirring up there in Southern California tonight. Continue to watch that. Uh, across the area of the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault and the Bay Area, a little bit more active here today uh, compared to the previous days up here around the Bay Area. Nothing big. Just a couple earthquakes there outside of the San Francisco Zoo. All right. Uh, San Andreas Fault there, somewhat active. A couple earthquakes there on the Hayward Fault and also the Calaveras Fault. A number of these fault systems here are well overdue uh, for some big-time earthquake activity there in the Bay Area. And uh, getting a little bit of movement on all of them. Northern California, uh, north of the Bay, 31 earthquakes out here around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Now, these are hydrothermal plants out here that utilize the, the heated energy, ener heated areas below to produce energy. Now, if you zoom in on any uh, satellite view here, you'll see there's a number of these facilities out there that, uh, well, they inject raw sewage down into b the area below. It's kind of a green idea, if you, if you think about it, uh, to create energy from some type of dry steam here and it powers a, a good amount of homes there around the Bay Area. So that's what those are. There's a number of earthquakes out there and some of these earthquakes can get rather large, uh, which is not a good thing for the folks that are operating the facilities because then you can come into lawsuits and whatnot uh, when you come into damages around the, uh, around the area. But for the most part, uh, you know, it's outside the Cod Mountain area, confined to the hydrothermal plants out there in the area. Uh, Lake Almanor, a couple earthquakes there this morning. Nothing uh, new to report here, just a 2.5 and a couple other earthquakes there throughout the day. Uh, let's see what we got outside of Vegas here. Really nothing major going on. Again, just keep an eye on Southern California. Any, any type of swarming there just off the plate boundary. You know, we're talking about, eh, what do we got, five miles here? Just do to the right here it would be to the east of the plate boundary itself and let's see what we got for earthquake activity out there in the last 30 days not a whole lot specifically in this area it looks like there was a little separate swarm here further to the east uh, within the last month or so but uh, we'll, we'll continue to watch it any any type of swarming is very important uh, to pay attention to uh, nothing major going on through the pacific northwest let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map here tonight or is Cascadia Trimmer. See if there's anything significant going on. And there's actually nothing 
zero epicenters here. Interesting. All right. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a couple earthquakes out there. Looks like a 1.4. Let me uh, just verify that real quick and see what we have across the area of Yellowstone. Really nothing major going on. There's some wind events out there. I can't. I don't even know if I can spot the 1.4 out there anywhere. So pretty quiet out there in respect to the earthquake activity across that super volcano. Up into Montana, a couple smaller quakes around Craig, Montana there. No depth for the earthquake. A little odd but uh well it says zero zero uh, miles below the surface there rest of the country look at that pretty quiet out there tonight in the last 24 hours as far as any world uptick goes out here well we got a pretty good swarm of act how'd that happen <laughs> zoom in and it goes to the uh south africa area we got a pretty good swarm of activity out here around the banda sea the maluka sea this is a mixed bag of plate dynamics out here. You can see the warping and twisting and pulling of the land here uh, throughout uh, time, obviously. And this is a major zone that sees, uh, well, a lot of earthquake activity here on any given day. This region is a combination of a number of different plates that are subducting and uh, uh, sliding past each other. And there's just it's a crunch zone. I call it the crunch zone because there's so much earthquake activity that occurs out there. We got a pretty good swarm of movement. Uh, stirring up out there this e this evening and also throughout the last 24 hours with uh, a number of earthquakes there in that region. Looks like there's a newer earthquake, a five, uh, is that a 5.1 out there? South of the area of interest, it's going to be this earthquake right here around the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, but overall, seismic activity definitely on the increase out there around that region. Also some super deep movement here underneath the uh, that's going to be the Sea of, uh, oh, where is that? USGS not reporting that earthquake, but there's a super deep earthquake here uh, in between Japan and, so that's going to be right about here within this area in the Japan Basin, uh, the uh, Yamato Rise area, this whole area. Um seen a little bit of deeper activity there look at that super deep earthquake it's a 4.6 down there about 470 miles underneath this area nothing coming in from the usgs here and that's pretty important to pay attention and be informed on these deeper quakes because they lead to surface adjustment upstream here and um it looks like we had one surface adjustment here uh, outside of tokyo with a 4.6 uh a little bit further upstream there into the the uh, Japan uh, Trench. So we continue to watch that. Definitely uh, got some deeper movement quakes up there. Alaska. See what up? See what's up here? Not a whole lot. I mean, we got a bunch of small microquakes. Really, nothing of any major movement out here today. No major intense areas to watch. Just general microquake movement across that subduction zone. Big Island of Hawaii, a little trail of activity leading off here to the east around the lower east rift zone. But these are, uh, let's see here, these are fairly deep earthquakes for the most part, except for that one, a 1.7. Really nothing a major concern out here for now. Um, let's go ahead and check out the latest information here from the Kilauea Volcano website. Let's see if we got anything uh, new to chat about. Last time I checked, a lot of these uh, stations here were offline. There's the seismograph stations there. Not a whole lot going on in terms of seismic activity. The deformation chart out here, which tells us the inflation or deflation ongoing underneath the area, shows, uh, well, the last two days here, a little bit of adjustment. I'm not for sure what, that doesn't look natural though. That almost looks like it's a uh, some type of manual adjustment going on. But these are very small uh, amplitude amounts there. This station here, this I don't know what's going on with this. You know, it something's happened here recently in terms of the monitoring of the Kilauea volcano. We dropped off here, and it's just been kind of neutral. And I don't believe that. I don't believe that it's just everything's gone flatlined here. Uh, so I'm not for sure what's going on, but uh, they need to get it fixed here. It looks like some type of technical error 
uh, in retrieving the information out there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Anything going on across New Zealand? Look at those deep earthquakes there near the Tonga Trench. A pair of them, it looks like. Uh, minimal adjustment here. Threes across the board, up and down the plate boundary. Uh, the Mediterranean area looks like a newer quake there. 2.3 coming in. Or uh, that's a 3.3 out around the area of uh, Crete, it looks like. Out here across this region. Aside from that, really nothing major going on across the Atlantic Ocean and Middle America Trench and South America area. Seeing their typical movement. I got a little earthquake activity around Puerto Rico here on the map. Let's see what we got here real quick. Pretty close to the Puerto Rico Trench, 3.4. Uh, just a couple hours ago. But aside from that, uh, look at that 3.4 they're reporting there in Ecuador. It's a little odd to, to produce to report a three-pointer out there internationally. I wish they would just uh, report them all. If you're gonna report one, report all of them. Or at least give us, the users, the option to add smaller quakes here onto the USGS map. That would be really cool and beneficial, I think, to integrate the option of having international earthquakes showing up here on the USGS site, aside from 4.0 and above. But occasionally, We'll get a three-pointer. I've even seen them report a two-pointer out here across the international community. It's, I don't know why, but I don't know how they make it up there. Somebody allows it to go on there. But all right. Um, yeah, look at that. That's pretty crazy. We'll continue to watch out in Southern California. Flatlining out here across the uh, flare chart. Now, it is somewhat elevated, though, consistently up in the sea flare category. We do have a... Uh, Oh, a number of active regions coming around the eastern limb. Look at this right here. Goodness. We got a uh, pretty significant spot there. Throwing off some flares, it looks like. Something uh, crazy looking there, to say the least. Now, we have sunspot number 3868, 3866. These are former sunspots that were out here a couple weeks back. Now... If I remember right, uh, it's either 3842 or 3844 that uh, produced the solar cycle's largest X flare. 3842, let's see what we got here. 3842, that's right. That produced the X 9.0 here back on the 3rd of October this month. And uh, of course, that's the largest flare of the solar cycle. It's coming back around the bend now. And. Um, 3868. That's got to be one of the sunspots out there. Let me see here. 3868 is probably going to be right here. So we don't even have a specific view yet of 3842, which is another active region further out behind the sunspot area. So we're going to be getting, uh, I think we're going to be getting some further stronger flares here uh, coming up later this week and into the weekend as these uh, sunspots look at those magnetic arches they're stretching no telling how far uh, across this area and this here is very dynamic looking i think we're gonna see uh, some stronger flares coming up here in these uh sunspots here in the days ahead right now very minimal chance but i guarantee you that's going to be bumped up by tomorrow five percent chance for x flare m flare at 40 Sea flare around 99% chance or so. And looking at the sunspot complexity here of at least one of the newer regions coming around, you can see out here on the on this area, there's quite a bit of complexity here with these different colors, close proximity. Um, that could spell some trouble for some stronger flares. Also, this region over here is showing a little bit of growth. But not really too concerned about that. That's going to be blasting off here to the e uh, western limb here in the days ahead. Actually, probably in the day ahead. And uh, we'll watch this area coming around the bend here. That looks uh, fairly active. No major flare threats for now. Aurora conditions somewhat elevated, somewhat out of the blue. Looks like uh, unsettled conditions out there across Canada, Alaska, uh, Greenland and Iceland area seeing a little bit of aurora potential. 
But aside from that, there's really nothing major going on yet. But we'll continue to watch that. Look at that. Just how active they are remains to be seen. But I, uh, just looking at these uh, arches out there, that's uh, quite dynamic. So I think it's going to be pretty active. This little quiet spell is probably going to come to an end here real soon. All right. Uh, anything major going on here for the severe weather department? Really nothing of any major interest here. We got uh, a couple different storm systems knocking on Northern California's door. Bringing maybe even some rain into Southern California here as we head towards the end of the month. That's going to bring some cooler weather. And, uh, well, we got to watch this here as we head towards uh, the first week of November. Models have been picking up on some type of tropical system out here around the Florida area uh, towards the first week of November. Now, this is a ways out, so don't get too excited about it. We're too worried about it because it is a ways out. But we got to watch. Um, it all has a lot to do with where this high pressure system is. If it's further up north, that will allow this tropical system to further venture into the Florida area. If the high pressure is south, that will keep it squashed and maybe not even hit the Florida area. Uh, and that will stir it off to the Atlantic. But just got to, wow, look at that. Got to watch this, right? I know it's a ways out. A lot of, a lot of forecasters don't like to even look at the GFS model this far out but I'm telling you when these models get into agreement over a period of time that's the time to pay attention so we'll continue to check back on it and uh, see how it plays out but uh, west coast looks like we got some more rain coming in towards November so it's it's our rainy season so we better start getting some rain out here I would hate to have a dry winter out here we don't need it I do not want to slip back into the drought no that would be uh, almost a worst case scenario right there. I'm a, I'm a big weather fan, so we need to bring on the uh, bring on the storms, bring on the uh, the winter time drought monitoring out here. Let's see what we got for right now. California, see we're starting to creep back in a little bit out here. Uh, very minor drought conditions out there, even down in Southern California. Uh, most of the drought conditions look like they're around the the Great Lakes area. Goodness. Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, even portions of eastern Texas there as well. Dealing with some uh, severe drought conditions. Looks like extreme drought conditions there in the darker red. So uh, yeah, hopefully those folks there get uh, some rain out there soon. All right, I'm out of here, folks. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Keep your eyes here on Southern California. Got uh, one more earthquake here since I've been chatting. A little bit further up north. <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness. <laughs> I felt it coming. I was going to try and end the update real quick, but I was like, no, I better just let it out. Right? Let it out. It happens once in a while, but hey, I'm only human. A little 1.7 up here north of our swarming area, and that is, again, in the hazard zone. So we got the strain out here against the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. We just got to watch it, folks. Not hoping for an earthquake, but we got to watch these little uh, little signs here on the eastern side of this plate boundary. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow morning. Uh, Tuesday, right? It's going to be Tuesday morning. All right. Take care.